Hey everyone and welcome to another tutorial by artincontext.org. Uh, this is a place where we explore various art related topics and in today's tutorial uh, we will be learning how to draw shoulders. Uh, more specifically we will be learning how to draw a set of male shoulders and kind of how the um, surrounding features such as the neck, um, the pectoral muscles kind of integrate um, into the shoulder muscles. Obviously with shoulders they're not this um, feature that kind of work in isolation but they are connected to the surrounding muscle groups of the body um, as well as the neck. Uh, so with that being said um, let's get started. Now something really important to note straight off the bat is male structures tend to have a higher muscle density um, and this is obviously due to uh, male hormones such as uh, testosterone and this affects the muscle groups and muscle growth. So this is something we really want to kind of uh, make sure that we understand in terms of um, how to uh, draw muscles correctly um, but more specifically how to kind of create a um, higher muscle density within the shoulder format. So within this tutorial we also have a reference image that we're going to use in tandem with our drawing process and this is just going to help us understand how to shape um, a male shoulder uh, profile a little bit more accurately um, and also understand the anatomy as we draw. So the intention as we start is we want to kind of just work out the basic outline of the uh, shoulder profile and this is something that we obviously going to work from the neck down into the upper bicep area. Again shoulders need to be contextualized by their surrounding features and this is because with muscle groups in particular they kind of fit together like puzzle pieces or lego blocks and when it comes to the muscle groups in the upper body um, we want to understand how the pectoral muscles and the deltoids which is another word for the shoulder muscles as well as the trapezius muscles um, and then ultimately the bicep muscles we want to understand how they flow together in order to create this um, muscular uh, shoulder-like um, profile uh, that is obviously um, unique to the male stature. Now what we want to do is we want to start kind of just lightly sketching an outline of the body um, or of the upper profile um, and this is where we start working from the neck and start using um, features of the body to kind of determine scale. So for instance obviously the clavicle which is another word for your um, collarbones run horizontally from one shoulder to the other and this is a great way to kind of um, uh, use it as a means of determining uh, placement of other features. So for instance, when we draw in features, what we can do is we can kind of pair them next to one another and see where other surrounding features should be. So for instance, as we draw uh, the neck, we know that the neck kind of starts curving outward to towards the shoulders. Um, but as it does so, it actually also goes down towards the jugular notch which is another word for that indentation below the neck and we can kind of use that jugular notch that indentation as a central um, point uh, from which the clavicles kind of start from and then move towards the shoulder and as they start moving towards the shoulder we can start seeing how they connect to uh, the um, upper section of the shoulder. So this is this is something we want to keep in mind as we kind of lightly sketch. At this point we're not trying to be too detailed with our drawing. What we want to do is we want to work with a light pencil kind of working in placements and shape of these different features and that's the general intention with this beginning process of just working out form, shape, outline. Uh, we really just want to make sure that we are using the features starting from the neck going down to the jugular notch, uh, working sideways um, or horizontal lines uh, to establish the clavicles or collarbones um, and seeing how they slowly form into the upper shoulder. Um, so this is what we want to do, we really want to just make sure that we use the features to determine where the next features should be placed um, or drawn in and so on and so on. Um, and this is also the case for the pectoral uh, muscles or at least the partition between the two uh, pectoral muscles. So we'll find that the um, clavicles are quite a centralizing or um, orienting uh, feature because they help to determine where other features sh should be drawn in. So because the clavicles kind of flow into the jugular notch, 
they also kind of flow downward or at least the jugular notch that central um, indentation below the neck kind of determines where the partition uh, will be drawn in um, to define the center part of the pectoral muscles so just try to kind of keep this in mind as you draw um, try to think about it as kind of like puzzling or piecing the body together one feature at a time and using these features to determine where the next feature um, should be drawn in now what you want to do is as we kind of draw in these um, different features something to start um, thinking about is what is the shape of these different muscle groups so we really want to start thinking about the shape of these different muscle groups so for instance with the deltoids um, they quite bulging as a feature so they have quite this arching shape that is rounded um, and this is especially true when the muscles are quite defined um, and in the case of this drawing, we are drawing quite defined muscles. Um, the same for the pectoral muscles. They are quite um, a rounded, bulging muscle. And another thing to think about is how um, the skin kind of rests or stretches over these muscle groups and how that is going to cause um, variations in shadow formation along these different features and how the shadow formation defines these features. Now, it is really important for us to think about skin, especially when we're drawing anatomical structures such as body parts. Um, and the reason why is because skin is quite a unique surface. Um, it's not necessarily uh, completely matte or glassy, but it does have the ability to kind of reflect light um, in very soft ways. So it does bounce light back um, off of its surface. And what this means is it's going to have moments of highlights and shadow. Um, and this is particularly true when the skin is kind of stretched over features such as bones and muscle that protrude uh, beneath the surface of the skin, um, which will inevitably cause shadow formations um, where the light struggles to reach those areas. So what we want to think about at this point is how um, different drawing techniques such as smooth shading um, or line work can be utilized to uh, further emphasize the form and structure of these different muscle groups and something again uh, to kind of compare in your mind is how their difference between the protrusions caused by muscle and the protrusions caused by uh, bone structures are going to be uh, slightly different so obviously because bones are quite um, uh, hard they're going to kind of create more harsh distinct uh, shadow formations and this is where we notice how the clavicle kind of uh, pushes the skin and kind of causes almost like a 90 degree angle uh, to define the clavicle bone beneath the surface of the skin the same can be said for the bones within uh, the neck area uh, or along the throat um, which are obviously the bones such as the uh, thyroid cartilage epiglottis hyoid bone trachea and so on and so on and obviously we really want to think about what this is going to do from beneath the surface of the skin and how light is going to interact with these surfaces so again thinking about um, not just the textural um, or compositional nature of these different um, anatomical features between bone and muscle but also thinking what that does to the skin and how that causes uh, shadow formations um, within these various areas now when we are definitely dealing with a more muscular stature what we want to start thinking is a is about kind of like very unique uh, muscular details and this is where we kind of try and emphasize the striations within muscle groups so for instance when we look at the deltoids we can see that there are these um, striations that kind of give this line quality um, throughout the muscle group um, and again because muscles are less harsh and a little bit more um, soft in their curves uh, the way in which we're going to represent these qualities with um, some drawing uh, marks is through the use of smooth shading and kind of creating more subtle shadow formations within these moments. Um, this is also a feature that is common within the chest area especially from the central chest area where the muscle group is most prominent and kind of sinks in um, and causes that partition between the two pectoral muscles. Uh, we'll start to see that there are these uh, striations that kind of come from the central pectoral muscle and kind of um, uh, move towards the, the inner uh, larger surface area of the pectoral muscle. 
So thinking through these uh, small details and how this obviously has an effect on the shadow formation in the muscle groups um, is extremely important. Now, as we obviously continue with our pencil drawing, we should start to um, come to a completion of our lightly drawn uh, shoulder um, image of this upper muscular male torso um, profile. Uh, something that we can do to almost enhance this drawing is also considering how uh, shadow formations um, would be uh, most prominent uh, within the curvature of the muscles and this is where we can actually start shading in the outline almost of each muscle groups uh, especially near the armpit area where the bicep starts to attach to uh, the pectoral muscle there's obviously going to be more shadow formation there because it faces downward that feature faces uh, downward and then therefore light is going to struggle to penetrate those areas um, but more than that, we can also start to add shading along the edges of the pectoral muscles to define curvature um, and just give a little bit more emphasis to the three-dimensional nature or structure of um, that feature. The same can be said for the trapezius muscles as well as the uh, deltoids or shoulder muscles. Um, so take your time with this pencil sketch. Again, this early stage of working with pencil um, sketching out the uh, features, kind of working in some light pencil shading is all a matter of just being patient um, and definitely kind of honing in on your observational skills. So there is a reference image available through the link um, uh, which is uh, specifically used for this tutorial um, which you can download but this process is obviously transferable to your own anatomical um, drawings um, in terms of just understanding the concepts of bone, muscle, skin, um, shading process and so on and so on. But in this particular drawing, it's really important for us to make sure that we are kind of emphasizing the three-dimensional nature of these features. And the way in which we do that is definitely through the use of shading um, and how to represent the unique aspects of these features, such as striations in the muscles um, or curvatures within the bones, um, how dark and how light our shading should be in order to represent these qualities um, in these features. Now at this point we should have a general uh, sketch and kind of well shaded in pencil drawing of the upper body. Uh, what we should have defined uh, with our pencils is the general shadow formations um, in the main areas um, or where they should be shaded in uh, in terms of how these different features uh, develop different types of shadows um, is obviously something you should take your time with. Uh, so before we move on to pen, just make sure you do obviously spend a good portion of time uh, kind of emphasizing these shadows in pencil because as we move um, into using our pens, what we're going to do is we're kind of just going to work over those pencil marks um, and use those pencil marks to guide us as we kind of um, further emphasize and add more contrast to the various features within our shoulder drawing. Now what we're going to do is we're going to start again from the neck and the reason being is it's really good to kind of work your way from one side of the drawing and kind of work through the entirety of the drawing um, slowly going through a set of features or one feature at a time. Now what we're going to do with our pen drawing process is we're going to make sure that we kind of uh, slowly add in layers. Again ballpoint pen works very similar to pencil uh, so you want to treat it as such and this means we want to build up our layers um, of shading this way we don't darken areas by accident that shouldn't necessarily be too dark um, and if we want to darken them we can just add more layers over them so starting from the neck allow yourself to kind of work in some light um, uh, shading with your ballpoint pen going over the pencil marks as a means of guiding you and this is where we start working in our shading around the uh, neck bones and all the way through down to the jugular notch where it starts to obviously uh, veer um, in a horizontal direction into the clavicles which obviously start forming into the shoulders and start to define the upper shoulders and this is where we again we'll slowly want to kind of pay attention to how um, the light source is interacting with these elements and how to kind of uh, form shadowing uh, that defines these elements um, one at a time. Now again it is also important for us to make sure that we understand the direction from which the light source is coming and this is obviously going to create a more prominent uh, shadow formation predominantly on one side um, of the figure. 
And the reason why we do this is it's because it's going to give a little bit more of a natural um, and realistic effect in terms of how these elements or these body features interact with the light source. So uh, in this particular tutorial where we are looking at this uh, muscular upper torso, we can see that the light source is predominantly on the right side, which means we can slowly start to darken uh, the left side a little bit more. Um, but that being said, we obviously still want to integrate shadow formation, uh, not only on the left side, but obviously on the right side as well. Again, it's really important for us to always bear in mind that we are dealing with um, these unique structures that are protruding from beneath the surface of the skin, uh, which is causing indentations and so on. Uh, in this particular tutorial, as we draw in a more muscular figure, or as we have drawn a more muscular figure, uh, we can also see that the muscles um, are more defined uh, than usual, which is going to create a little bit more of a distinct shadowing around those muscle groups. And this is particularly true for the deltoids as well as the pectoral muscles um, and the trapezius muscles as well. Now, working with your ballpoint pen, again, simply just take your time. Make sure you're slowly working your way down from the neck, spending time on these features as you slowly transition into the lower features. And this is where we start to kind of transition into the pectoral muscles, as well as the biceps um, that connect to the pectoral muscles. Um, again, something to think about is we can start to also darken um, the shading marks around the bone structures and this is particularly true for uh, the um, bones such as the hyoid bone or the epiglottis bone um, or the trachea. Definitely the bones in the throat, um, they tend to be quite sharp and there's always going to be a distinction um, in terms of how the light source interacts with this feature and how it creates a shadowing um, a little bit more prominently on one side. Uh, the same can be said for the clavicle bones um, or the collar bones. Um, uh, we really want to make sure that we use um, a little bit more of a darkened or distinct um, shading mark uh, to really refine and emphasize the protruding qualities of the bone structures. And then once we start moving and transitioning into the muscle groups, we can get a little bit softer. Uh, with our mark making or shading process because again muscles tend to be a little bit softer in the way they protrude beneath the skin um, compared to that of bone structures but otherwise guys this is the general process again major takeaways to think about is number one think about the general shape and forming of the structure and this is where we outline the different um, features such as the uh, deltoid muscles, pectoral muscles, um, as well as the trapezius muscles, making sure that we scale them um, correctly in comparison to one another. The second thing is to think about the light source and how this is interacting with different uh, compositional qualities of these different features. And what I mean by that is bones obviously are different to muscles and that's going to have an effect on how they create shadowing. Uh, based off of the way in which these features um, create protrusions from beneath the surface of the skin. Um, so we really want to make sure that we think about this. And then lastly, uh, we want to think about how do we utilize our shading process in order to define these uh, features in a realistic way. And again, in terms of skin as a surface area or a surface quality, it's quite smooth. Uh, it's kind of in the middle uh, 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 points between glassy texture and matte like texture so there is going to be reflection of light off of the surface and therefore we want to create both highlights and shadowed elements within the various features of our shoulder drawing um, some other key takeaways to think about again muscles are a very unique type of structure so especially in the case of this tutorial because we are drawing quite a muscular shouldery um, profile upper body profile uh, what tends to happen is that the striations in the muscles uh, kind of are a little bit more defined than usual and this is where we start to create those um, line strokes that flow down the sides of the deltoids um, and we define that obviously with some soft smooth shading um, both with pencil and pen the same can be said with the pectoral muscles especially in the partition uh, chest area where the two pectoral muscles connect they are these like horizontal soft horizontal um, striations 
Um, and again, we, we really want to pay attention to how we build up those soft shadows to define these features with our uh, ballpoint pen. A uh, good suggestion uh, with ballpoint pen, make sure you keep some scrap paper nearby to scribble on as you proceed with your pen shading process. This is just going to help you kind of get rid of any excess buildup of ink in the pen before you proceed to add in layers of shading. And again, lastly with your ballpoint pen, make sure that you build up layers um, of shading. So if you want to achieve a, t a certain darkness in tonal value, don't just color in um, a dark stroke try to really build up the layer uh, with your pen marks until you have reached that point because if you're building up layers with light um, pen strokes at least you can back out before you make a mark that's too dark that you can't take back um, so that's really important when you get to your pen shading process otherwise it's simply a matter of just taking your time going over your pencil marks and make sure that you are constantly referring to the reference image um, when we're dealing with anatomy guys observational skills are are really important it's really important to consider the anatomical structure and what is it, what's happening uh, beneath the surface of the skin with bone and muscle um, features otherwise that is it guys this is the general process of how to uh, draw shoulders in a realistic way specifically male upper torso profiles um, and how to kind of define these unique muscle groups um, within a male uh, torso and more specifically how to contextualize the surrounding features um, near the uh, deltoid uh, muscle groups which are the shoulders and how to kind of connect the shoulders um, into the rest of the body in a way that kind of makes sense um, and looks realistic um, so yeah it's really important when we deal with anatomy to kind of understand how things work together and not just in isolation this gives us a more holistic sense of how to draw uh, these unique features um, a little bit more accurately um, so thanks again, um, I hope these principles and concepts are helpful for your own drawing process um, and until next time, cheers guys, see you in the next video.